thanks, Phil. So, the wonders of WebRTC. Hi, I'm Mark Vidonis. I'm a developer here in Leeds, so it's great to be speaking here. Uh, I work for a WebRTC consultancy called Nimble Ape, uh, and we're also the team behind Evercast Labs, um, where we develop real-time video products. We're also the organizers of a um, WebRTC and open media conference called ComCon. And obviously, I'm here to talk about WebRTC. So what is there to talk about? Isn't it just video calls? Well, let's take a look at what WebRTC really is. So it's a set of standards that enable real-time communications over the internet. It's got a media channel for audio and video, but it's also got a data channel. And it's built into every modern browser. So anything from uh, laptops to mobile to anything that has a browser is basically capable of doing WebRTC. And it's secure by default, which means that it gives you end-to-end uh, -end encryption right out of the box without any further setup. So what are the powers of WebRTC? Well, because it's built into every browser, uh, it's available out of the box on over 2 billion devices. And this makes it very easy for users to just click on a link and jump on, jump on a video call. But it also makes things easy for us as developers because we don't necessarily need to develop uh, specific native apps for every OS. We just need to make a website. We can use WebRTC on native apps if we want to, but we're not forced to. It, it supports high quality. You can easily stream 4K60 from a phone. You might see that you know, if you have a poor connection, quality will degrade, but we'll get back to it in a, in a minute. And it also puts no limits on the number of streams, so you can share as many videos, audios, and screen shares as you want at the same time in a WebRTC uh, connection. You might have experienced differently where we're usually limited to one video and one screen share, but that's a platform limitation, not a limitation of the standard. So WebRTC is pretty powerful, um, but why is it relevant now? So especially after the start of the pandemic, video streaming has been transforming industries. And web, the WebRTC market alone is expected to grow to $21 billion by 2025. And I just want to give you one example today, which is the broadcasting industry. So the broadcasting industry needs live streaming. But what do I mean needs live streaming? We already had it, right? So you can watch uh, live shows on iPlayer and YouTube and whatnot. Um, let me take a step back. How live is live streaming? So it turns out that the vast majority of video being streamed on the internet has a latency of 10 to 30 seconds. So it means that when, when you're watching something live, it actually comes with a delay. Uh, and this has to do with how the video is packetized, the buffering that the video player applies. And in general, this is all done to allow enough time to retransmit any video packets that might be lost along the way, perhaps due to network congestion. So in general, there's, there tends to be a trend trade-off between quality and latency. How, how high quality you want your video to be and how much latency you have to accept. And this, um, this graph shows it a little bit better. So HLS is the most used uh, protocol for streaming video over the internet. And it comes with a typical latency of over 20 seconds. And this is fine because it was de uh, developed for uh, on-demand video. So for example, if I'm paying for Netflix in 4K, I want my video to be in 4K, right? I don't really care if those video packets you know, left the server 20 seconds ago. But as live video streaming became more and more popular, new uh, protocols emerged like low latency HLS and SIT, which took latency down to about two seconds. But actually, as you can see from the graph, WebRTC is the only uh, protocol that is available right now that consistently gives you sub-second latency. And in real terms, you get you know, a typical latency of 200 milliseconds. And well, this is obvious because it was developed to allow real-time communication. If I want to have a conversation with someone over the internet, I, I, there cannot be delay. I, it has to be immediate, essentially. Uh, so this can come sometimes at cost of quality if you have a poor connection or if you know network is very congested, and you will see video quality degrading. But if you're on a very stable, uh, strong connection, you will have high-quality video at subsequent latency. So why is this? important for broadcasting then? Well, the industry is changing. More and more live, live media is being consumed on apps. And viewers expect those live to mean real time, like what I see on screen now is happening right now. 
and there is more and more demands to interact with a remote audience in real time and get them uh, get them to you know reply to polls or just get them uh, get impressions or of what's happening in real time. And creators want to be able to go live from anywhere and any device. And what better technology than one is already available on two billion devices? And in sports, wouldn't it be nice to eliminate lag-induced spoilers, especially you know at the World Cup final, for example? So in general, technologies like WebRTC are opening up new creative avenues for the industry. And I just want to give you one example. So I'm going to play a video, so heads up for possible motion sickness. So this video was shot on a professional drone, flying at over 100 miles an hour following a golf ball at the tournament. And you can see what amazing shot it can take. These are new shot opportunities that are made available but you know, professional drones and new technologies. And they are available at the fraction of the cost of a helicopter. And obviously, the camera that's mounted on the, on the drone is a professional camera that can be WebRTC enabled. So it means that it can stream live video in real time uh, directly to a media server that could be located on premises locally or directly on the cloud. And this marries up very well uh, with increasing use of private 5G networks. So as um, you, can, you can set up your private 5G network that covers you know, the field or the stadium or the concert venue. And if you have a camera with a 5G module, then uh, you, you're suddenly streaming 4K video through 5G in real time, sub-second latency from a drone directly to, uh, directly to the cloud and to a remote audience. And I think that's pretty amazing. And there's so much more to talk about. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the time. But um, WebRTC providers are increasingly allowing developers to uh, create interactive live streaming experiences where you can have up to 100,000 participants real time in the same video call with subsequent latency. And this is opening up new opportunities for you know, new platforms, like for example, massive real time virtual fitness classes. But there are also a lot of uh, new uh, open source projects that are coming out. Like, for example, Hybridly is an open source hybrid meetup platform project that we started with the lovely people of Wallops in, in Uruguay. And I highly recommend you take a look at the GitHub. And WebRTC is not only for video. WebTorrent is an open source project where uh, basically they enable you to transfer at super high speed fi files over an end-to-end -end encrypted connection from a browser to anywhere. And it's not, not just browsers, right? So Pion is another lovely open source project uh, where the team completely rewrote the WebRTC spec in Go to make it available on any platform that uh, doesn't necessarily need to speak JavaScript. So there's a lot going on. Hopefully, I convinced you that uh, WebRTC is not just video calls anymore. Um, and yeah, the, the industry is moving very fast. We're always pushing the boundaries of what we can do with WebRTC. And we're always looking for new people to join and get interested and you know, help us create new, new exciting things. And if you're interested in learning a bit more about WebRTC, our conference ComCon is coming back in June. Um, we have a special discount code just for the all day hey crowd that you can see on, on, on screen. Uh, that's 300 pound off. So if you're interested, come talk to me and uh, Hopefully, I'll see you at ComCon. Thank you.